Greetings, everybody. I am the Starving Martian, and this is Man Bat. Specifically, the Man Bat action figure that was released in 1997 for the Batman Legends of the Dark Knight toy line. It was a really, really, really odd toy line. They had some really, really, really ugly <laughs> figures. Uh, look it up on Amazon or eBay sometime. You'll see that Batman and Robin both got saddled with some ridiculous costumes for that toy line. Uh, there was a Batgirl that was... Um, well, let's just say I wouldn't let my daughter out of the house wearing what she was wearing. Um, there was some really, really odd characters. But there were some decent ones too. I particularly like the Joker in that line. And this guy here, Man Bat. Uh, this was a larger-than-usual action figure line. Um, and so while this guy is huge, he is pretty proportionate to the rest of the figures. Unfortunately, he's the only figure I have from that line, so I can't compare him with anybody else. But um, according to his package, which I sadly no longer have, he has a wingspan of 15 inches. So uh, that's pretty impressive right there. Man Bat, of course, is a... Um, Comic book character from the Batman comics introduced in the 1970s. Uh, his civilian name, if you will, was um, Kirk Langstrom. And uh, he was popular enough, he even had his own comic book series back in the uh, 70s. Uh, he's had a couple of miniseries and uh, attempts at revival since. Uh, Man Bat was actually the very first uh, villain in the um, now famous and universally beloved Batman the Animated Series. And I used to, when I was a kid, have a Man Bat action figure from um, that line as well. So um, he's got a, a, a long history. Um, sadly, he is kind of a ripoff of the Spider-Man character of uh, the Lizard. But um, what are you going to do? These comic book characters play off each other all the time. So everyone's a ripoff of everybody else. Um, but Man Bat's pretty awesome. He's one of those guys who's sometimes a hero, sometimes a villain. Depends on who's writing him. Depends on the, you know, mood of the day. But um, hero or villain, this one particular Man Bat is not one I would like to bump into. He is quite fierce looking. And um, so we're going to get in on some of his details. But before we do, uh, I mentioned his height before. So um, I don't have any other characters from the line to compare him to. But let's take a look at him next to some standard action figure so you could get a sense of how giant this guy is all right there he is next to hannah dundee um our cadillacs and dinosaurs figure who we like to bring out she's about jurassic park size uh here he is next to the world's ugliest robin and i honestly don't know why i ever bought that thing <laughs> But so you can see he towers over regular um, Batman action figures. If you want him to make really make him look really huge, here he is next to a Penguin Commando. In fact, let's slide him over to the side a little bit. Here he is next to my 7-inch Samus figure. And yeah, if he didn't like crouch and bend his knees at that angle, he'd easily be as tall as she is. So, uh, that's a pretty good size. And he obviously has the bigger wingspan of the two. So, um, let's get a look at some of his details. Let's zero in on that noggin. I do very much like his face sculpt here. It's uh, quite bestial, quite ferocious. His head pivots back and forth. Yeah, that's about all you get out of it. In fact, he can do <laughs> full 360 with it, which doesn't sound or look particularly healthy. Uh, he's got some nice uh, fangs there, some glowing red eyes, a little bit of gold inside of his ears. Um, and one thing I love about this figure is his clothes, his shirt and pants. Most Man Bat figures are buck naked, but I love this look on him. It gives him a real, like, Wolfman kind of appeal. Um, you know, you figure he could have just, you know, taken his, uh, bat formula and, uh, burst out of his, uh, lab coat. Speaking of his lab coat, it's hard to see details on my crank camera, but, uh, he's actually got a name badge there that actually reads K. Langstrom. It has, uh, his picture there and some, uh, text which is unreadable. 
Uh, but uh, enough to say that that is, you know, he was at work when he turned into bat form. So they're going to have to dock his pay, I suppose. Coming down, you'll see his legs. His uh, taloned feet there. Turn them around. And you see his lab coat's shredded. Actually, it's probably not even a lab coat. I would say it's probably just a white shirt. But um, there's nothing underneath it. And I like the shreds of the shirt stuck on his wrist and biceps there. So, um, the, I love the details on his wings. You can see his uh, veins running through there. Um, I like the way it, the colors subtly shift from that brown to that red as uh, the membrane stretch down. And on the inside of his wings, more of a, a tan brown uh, fleshy color. You can see where his uh, fingers here have morphed into the bones needed to support the membrane. Now as far as posability goes, um, well I hope you guys like this pose because it's the only one he's going to stand in. He really does need his wings to support himself. Uh, his um, legs can move back and forth, but once you get him out of position... He's not going to be supporting his weight any. Um, you can, as long as you got at least one wing on the ground, though, you can do things with the other arm. But the arms lift, they pivot back and forth, uh, they turn at the elbow, and so um, let's see if we can get maximum. There we are. Spread his wings out if you turn everything the right way. Here's his full 15 inch wingspan. I haven't actually measured it myself, but that's what the uh, package claims it to be. And that's as straight as you can really get his arms. He doesn't have any flapping wing action, anything like that. Which is fine to me because um, you know that would require putting a uh, button on his back that would, you know, interrupt the flow of the figure. And I like the fact that it's just, you know, just man bad as he is. This guy didn't come with any accessories. Uh, his feature is just his size, his immensity. Now, Man Bat is one of those figures I doubt they ever would, but I would love to see done in a um, live-action Batman movie. The two two villains I would love to see in a Batman movie are Man Bat and Clayface. I think especially with modern um, CG technology, they could do an excellent job on these characters. Unfortunately, the movies, uh, ever since the uh, Dark Knight trilogy, tend to favor more of a realistic approach to the Batman universe. Um, which I find sad. I think comic book movies should feel like comic books, but that's a discussion for another video. Um, but I very, very much like this Man Bat figure. Uh, as I said, there's not too many poses you could get him into, but his one standard pose just looks really good on the shelf anyway. Um, you know what's kind of fun to do is, there we go, put him off to the side, have him, like, battling dinosaurs and stuff. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But, um, so as far as uh, availability and cost goes, I got this guy, I believe, off of Amazon. He's available on Amazon and eBay. He tends to run about 20 bucks altogether after shipping. So, um, if uh, you like it enough to drop $20 on it, go right ahead. If uh, it's not that impressive to you, then uh, by all means, save your money for something else. But, um... If you, if you decide to get him out of package, if you can get a deal on him used, um, just make sure his joints are, are tight so that uh, his, you know, wings don't flop around. But as I said, he doesn't come with any accessories, so you don't have to worry about trying to get a complete one or one, with, you know, that you're going to be missing anything. What you see is what you get. 
So guys, this has been the Starving Martian taking a look at Man Bat. I hope you enjoyed and we'll catch up with you next time. In the meantime though, keep watching the skies. Because you don't want one of these things swooping down on you.